part three, okay? This is part three on um, questions, IB questions on the topic proteins 2.4. So let's just get into it. Let's continue. So which description here matches the protein? So again, they're giving us, I told you many times, there's a set of proteins that you need to, um, protein examples that you need to know. We learned about proteins, but you need to know some examples, okay? Uh, let me show you here if I go all the way to the bottom here. Um, you need to know this list of proteins, okay? You need to remember these, okay? These are all proteins that you need to remember, and you need to know, like, one line on each of them, just basically what they are. They're not going to grill you down and ask you complicated questions about these. If you know what these are individually, one line on each, you should be able to answer any IB question. So they do pop up, okay? So that's why I keep emphasizing it. So A, collagen. This is a protein, right? And what does it do? It's the most common structural protein in animals. That's actually true. So the answer will be A. It's a common, it's, it's, um, it's basically a protein that helps strengthen things. So it's in your skin. Like when you pull your skin, it doesn't rip apart, right? That's because there's a lot of collagen in there keeping it strong. Um, and there's another type of collagen in your, in your ligaments, right? The things that hold your bones together. And there's another type in your, uh, in your uh, tendons and muscle and things like that. All things that are related to structure, okay? So that's important. Collagen is super, super important. Now, B, rhodopsin or rhodopsin, rhodopsin, however you want to say that. So they're saying it's function. So we know it's not going to be true because we know A is true, but let's just confirm. It's an enzyme for carboxylation of RUBP. No, that is Rubisco, not rhodo, no, not rhodopsin, okay? They're basically mismatching it. The protein that does that is Rubisco, and you'll learn that in, um, uh, what do you call it? Photosynthesis, okay? Photosynthesis. So C, insulin. Insulin is a protein that uh, basically we know di diabetic, some diabetic people don't have this, this kind of protein, and we know this purpose of this protein is to lower your blood glucose level. So after you eat, this protein will be released that will bring down your blood glucose level so that it doesn't go too high. Now, they're saying here that insulin raises your blood glucose level. No, that's the it does the opposite. It lowers it. That's why people with some diabetes um, can't bring it down. Their blood glucose level will be too high because they're missing this thing that brings it down. Now, last one here, immunoglobin. So this one is involved in your immune system. It helps fight infection and all that. And they're saying here, the description is extremely sensitive to light. No, that's not true. But there's another one that is extremely sensitive to light, and it's called rhodopsin, okay? that's it's, it's related in the ability to have sight, to be able to see, okay? So that's why it's sensitive to light. So the answer here is A. So you can see I really it's really important to rem remember something about each of these examples, okay? Next one. Where are amino acids joined together to make polypeptides? So we know that, let me show you, going back up here, that basically amino acids are joined together um, with the help of some DNA. DNA is the, the instruction manual that helps uh, tell the cell how to, which amino acids to put together to be able to make the protein. Now, where does this happen? Where does this amino acids get put together to form a polypeptide? The answer is, Maybe it's not so clear here, but you see those little dots here on the uh, on the endoplasmic endoplasmic reticulum, the rough endoplasmic endoplasmic reticulum. They are can be located there, or they can be freely floating in the cytoplasm of the cell. They are the little organelle or little thing that uh, little structure that helps to put together these amino acids to form proteins. Okay, so it's going to be ribosomes. The nucleus just has the DNA. The nucleolus is condensed piece of DNA, and then Golgi apparatus is just a little organelle here. I think it's probably going to be this one that helps process the proteins that are made. Okay, it helps process the proteins before they're sent out to the place that they're required at. Okay, so it's going to be D ribosomes. Which protein is identified with its function? So again, they're doing a similar thing. Same kind of question, different options here. So A, collagen, provides strength and support for tissues and organs. Again, this is, this is um, the right answer, right? It provides strength and support. See, it's different from this one, although it seems similar. So why not B? Because we said rhodopsin was the little protein involved in sight, in sight, being able to see. But they're saying enzyme found in tears. Nope, that's not true. That's random. Uh, insulin, again, it's related to bringing down 
dropping the blood glucose concentration, but here they're saying raising, so again, that's wrong. And a D, immunoglobin, this is involved in your immune defense, like fighting bad, bad uh, bacteria or viruses, okay? Um, but they're saying here helps in blood clotting. No, it doesn't help in blood clotting. It has no role there. So the answer is A. What is a proteome? Okay, so this is one definition that you need to know inside this chapter. What a proteome is. So we know that we have DNA, right? And each cell has all the DNA, okay? Your brain cells have the same DNA as your uh, skin cells. Um, but the reason why they're different is because the skin cells are only reading the DNA that allows it to become a skin cell, whereas the brain cells are, are only using the DNA that allows them to become a brain cell. So they don't, each cell only use part of the DNA. Now, your genome is the collection of all your genetics, all your genes, okay, in your nucleus. Now, just like that, your proteome is the collection of all your proteins expressed in a certain cell, okay? So the collection of all your proteins made by a certain tissue or cell, okay? So is it A, the genes that code for all the proteins in the ribosome? No, that's your, that's your, um, that's your DNA, so that's not right. B, the group of proteins that generate a proton gradient in the mitochondria. Nope, that's random. C, the entire genome of a prokaryote. Nope. Uh, D, the entire set of proteins expressed by an organism at a certain time. That's what I just said. Yeah, it's all the proteins made by an organism at a certain time. It's your collection of proteins, okay, your proteome. So it's D. Okay, last one here. Which process is an example of catabolism. So you need to know two words, right? Catabolism and anabolism. Catabolism, I, I think of like a cat, okay? What does a cat do? They destroy things. They destroy your curtain, your couch, or whatever, all right? So catabolism is the process of destroying or breaking apart molecules, okay? So catabolism, breaking apart molecules. Whereas anabolism is the process of forming molecules. So when we break apart, so we, we can use an example here, when we uh, form, so we link together two amino acids here, um, we call that anabolism, okay? And this type of anabolism, this type of forming, bringing together two molecules to form a bigger one, is called condensation because water is lost in the process. So condensation is a type of anabolic reaction. Um, now the opposite is catabolism, right? If we break apart these two amino acids, into two separate amino acids, that would be called catabolism. And specifically, in this example, the type of catabolism would be hydrolysis, okay? Because water is used to split them, okay? So that's what catabolism is. So what is an example here? Translation of mRNA. So translation, maybe you don't know about this yet, but this is the process of basically um, putting together um, Amino, it's basically the process of reading an mRNA and using that mRNA to put together amino acids, okay? So it's the process of reading your DNA to put together amino acids. So this is a anabolic reaction because you're putting together amino acids. You're forming them. You're making a chain of them. So D, replication of DNA. Again, replication means you're increasing, you're doubling it, okay? So that is anabolism, not catabolism. C, hydrolysis of a protein. So that's true. You're breaking the pro your hydrolysis, like I said, is the reverse reaction. So going from this one to two separate amino acids. So that is a type of catabolic reaction. So it's going to be C. What about D, synthesis of a disaccharide? So synthesis means making, and that's catabolism, right? Uh, I mean, synthesis is a making, which means anabolism, not catabolism. Catabolism is breaking. So it's not going to be D. So we know the answer is C. So Hopefully all of these videos, part one, two, and three, were all useful and helped you um, apply your knowledge a little bit about what you learned, okay? Again, do as many as you can. and Also do some paper two. I'll, in the future, I'll make videos on paper two. Just right now, I'm busy trying to finish all the, the teaching content so that you guys have it all ready for this year. Um, but yeah, so the more, the more you can do, the better. I, I'm basically, I am basically, I organize all the past paper questions into... Um, into uh, separate PowerPoints per topic. So if you want that, just email me and it's very easy and convenient to use.